Hi, I'm Lauren White. In this lesson, we'll talk together about how to identify a nucleophile. So first, let's talk about what a nucleophile actually is. And let's start by using our word roots. So nucleo just means nucleus. And file, like you see in hydrophilic, just means loving. So with our word roots, nucleophile literally translates to nucleus loving. Well, why would it be nucleus loving? Well, think about what's in the nucleus of an atom. There are lots of protons, so there are lots of positive charge. And so these molecules, nucleophiles, love the nucleus because they're super negative. So this makes sense. And the definition of a nucleophile is just an electron dense species. They have lots of electrons. They're very negative. Now, because they have so many extra electrons kind of hanging around, they have more than they need, they're willing to be uh, philanthropic, charitable. They're going to share. They're going to give those electrons to someone who needs them more. And who might they give those electrons to? Well, as it turns out, they would give them to electrophiles, which are electron deficient. So then how do we identify, how do we spot a nucleophile? Well, there are a few tells that we can look for. And so the first and, and easiest to spot of these things is a negative charge. You'll see on the molecule a big old negative charge sitting on one of the atoms. Now, some of the less obvious ways to check that you have to do a little bit closer looking is, is there an atom with a lone pair? If you have an atom that has lone pairs, it can share, it can donate those electrons. Finally, a pi bond. So think back to Jen Kim that when we have a single bond, we call that a sigma bond. But double bonds must have a sigma bond and a pi bond. Triple bonds need a sigma bond and two pi bonds. So what we're talking about here, when we look for a nucleophile, we're looking for a double or a triple bond because it has more electrons and it could share those around. So let's do some examples to make this a little bit more clear. So this question is asking us which atoms in these molecules could serve as a nucleophile in a reaction. So we're going to use our definition of nucleophiles. We're going to use those tells we talked about. So let's start with A. Look at that. Easy to spot. There's a negative charge on that carbon. That always to us means that this could serve as a nucleophile. Now, why do we have the lithium positive there? Well, don't let that throw you off. But just keep in mind that when we add this to a reaction, we would add it as one big molecule that would then ionize in solution to give us a lithium plus and our negative nucleophile. Let's try B. Do you see any negative charges? Nope. All right, so let's move to our next step. Do we have any atoms that would have lone pairs? Well. It might be hard to see because it's not shown in this diagram, but oxygen actually does have two lone pairs. And so it will certainly be willing to donate some of that electron density as a nucleophile in a reaction. Now, let's look at part C. Don't let the big molecule scare you. It's no big deal. We can handle it. We're going to go through our steps. I don't see a negative charge. That's okay, though. So next step, are there atoms with lone pairs? Well, you should notice the oxygen, and we just talked about oxygen, is going to have two lone pairs on it. But is that all? Well, no. Our nitrogen atom will have a lone pair, but now we have two nucleophilic centers in this molecule. Let's check our last tell, though. Are there any pi bonds? There are. In fact, since we see this double bond, we know that that double bond could also be a nucleophilic center. In a later video, you'll discuss how to decide which one of these is going to be able to react. But for now, you should feel more comfortable identifying nucleophilic centers by looking for a negative charge, atoms with lone pairs, or a pi bond.